be able to spot aircraft from anywhere, even in the midst of nature, to identify the planes that cross the sky. Thanks to this technology, that is now possible. It's legal and it's very easy. Just go online, connect to the website flighttrader24.com and you will find yourself immersed in air traffic. You can even identify the planes that fly overhead. This technology, already available for plane spotters to enjoy, is intended to provide a leap forward in aviation safety and efficiency. It is also environmentally friendly. It's called ADSB, which stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast. It's a system that relies on aircraft broadcasting their identity, position and other information taken from their onboard systems. The signal can be captured for surveillance purposes on the ground or on board other aircraft. Networked, this data creates an overall picture of traffic in the skies, an actual virtual radar. The ADSB has been designed, developed and tested in recent years in Europe and the United States. The European manufacturer Airbus is closely involved in the application of the technology. We've come to Toulouse in France, the headquarters of Airbus, to see how the system works from the pilot's point of view. Experimental test pilot Philippe Pellerin takes us on board the Airbus 340 simulator equipped with ADSB. We're currently at flight level 360. That means 36,000 feet, heading north on our way to Nice. At the moment, I'm getting information about four surrounding aircraft. Two are at my level, one's higher, one's lower. The ADSB that we've introduced will help to enhance this information, and so we'll be able to show traffic on the screen and more information about each aeroplane, such as its orientation, ground speed and identification number. sur l'orientation de chacun des trafics, sa vitesse sol et son indicatif. In the future, I'll be able to land behind a plane much closer to it than today. And this will allow the airport to have a greater capacity to get more planes landing and taking off. Since it is, in fact, a virtual radar, ADSB can improve and bring greater efficiency to the air traffic in those areas that are currently not served by radar, such as the Atlantic Ocean, where the sky is crisscrossed daily by hundreds of aircraft that connect Europe with America. The range of the radars on the two sides of the Atlantic doesn't reach more than a few miles from the shore. Throughout the Atlantic trip, the air traffic control is procedural, that is, it's based on respect for the altitude and the route assigned to each aircraft. The distance separating each plane is, for safety, extended to at least 80 miles. As it's not under radar control, the system on the Atlantic routes is carefully planned. Every day in this centre at Prestwick in Scotland, a group of experts draw up highways of the sky that will be used by the planes. Let's see how it's done. Air traffic in the oceanic area is handled in this control room, one of the largest in Europe, opened in 2009. Controllers here also handle the air traffic in the north of the United Kingdom, so civilian and military work side by side. The Atlantic routes are tracked daily according to weather conditions and other needs. As the Deputy Operations Supervisor, Jim Brunton, explains to us. What we do is we ask the operators to send us their requested routings if there was no restrictions. They all send in this information in the evening. We then take that information and also look at what's going on from an air traffic perspective, whether we have certain constraints with our uh, colleagues uh, in adjacent centres or whether there's perhaps um, engineering problems or there's uh, military activity. And using all that information, we then look at what the operators want and build up a set of tracks that best meets their needs. Looking out of the window flying over the Atlantic, a passenger can get a feeling of loneliness, as if the plane was a small craft with its human cargo in a vast ocean. But in reality, even if you don't realise it, the airspace is pretty crowded. You could have an aircraft 1,000 feet, 1,000 feet below, 1,000 feet above, 
60 miles to the right, 60 miles to the left, and 80 miles in front, 80 miles behind. And sometimes on the busy days and the busy tracks, that is what is happening. Meanwhile, Jim's colleagues have prepared a bundle of Atlantic tracks for the day. They are shown on the computer. Tracks have been created now and what we do is we put them into our system and this is how it is displayed to the controllers on the day. They use the information that they have in front of them as well as the flight plan information and using this they can clear the aircraft at a better way and a more efficient way than they would have been if there was no tracks created. The ADSB can help make this system of Atlantic routes more efficient, especially through a new technique called ITP, in-trail procedure. That allows aircraft to reach their best altitude to burn less fuel, thanks to the fact the crew can see and identify aircraft around their plane, and so it's easier to change their altitude. Here, in this example, I have two planes, one in front and one behind me, who are both a thousand feet above me. But I'd like to climb to flight level 380, in the current state of things, I'm not allowed to, because I'd be separated from them by less than 10 minutes. If I use the ITP so I can see the other planes, I can tell the controller that I'll be able to cross quickly enough the level where the other two planes are, to reach the altitude that I ask, and I'll be able to reduce the distance of 80 miles between us to about 25 to 30. 500 minimum. The captain ends the simulation landing in a virtual Nice. If it had been done in reality, our flight using the ADSB may have yielded significant fuel savings. Five. Today, the implementation of ADSB on our commercial aircraft can allow us to save one ton of fuel on each transatlantic flight by being able to uh, fly the aircraft at its optimum flight level. And in the future, what we expect is for greater interactivity between aircraft to help to optimize trajectories further, not just in oceanic airspace, but also in dense uh, airspace in terminal areas. After the experimental phase, the first commercial flights using the new procedures based on the ADSB will start this summer. A contribution to efficiency that is also environmentally friendly.